What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just web series. We're talking about Transformers 5. This is episode number 30. And in this episode, I have no news and no updates. What a big surprise. It's been two weeks since we heard the news about Transformers 5, 6, 7, and 8 is coming. But after that, nothing. No updates. Nothing at all. So what I decided that I'm going to do is... I want to give you guys a top 10 list in this episode and this top 10 list is a bit of a wish list. I know a lot of people like to put out their wish list or things they want to see in the next Transformers live action film. So I'm going to do the same for you guys to create a little bit of discussion and actually a lot of um, members of the Rage Nation community have asked me what kind of things would you like to see in uh, Transformers 5? What kind of characters and you know what kind of... Um, things you know what I'm saying well in this list I'm not going to provide specifics about what characters I want to see or what um, what uh, uh, um, specific um, Transformers lore things that I would want to see instead I'm going to present to you a top 10 list of sequences that I'd love to see in the general sense so I'm not going to name characters I'm not going to name um, uh, 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 um, Transformers elements, like specific Transformers elements, like Cybertron or or, or uh, Energon cubes or anything like that. I'm talking about uh, sequences or scenes or just things in general, story elements that I would love to see in Transformers Five. And here is this list, and we're going to start off with number ten. Okay, number 10. This is the top 10 list of things that I would love to see in Transformers 5. Number 10 is a motorcycle Autobot that actually has a big role. The first time we saw motorcycle Transformers at all was the RC triplets. And there was RC, Chromia, and well, Elita 1. And they had the tiniest role in the entire movie. They were just there for show, to be completely honest. They didn't really do a whole lot. Um, they were just there. <laughs> and I felt that was really disappointing. So what I'd love to see is a small Autobot in the form of a motorcycle, but he has a really, really big role. And what that kind of thing does for a character is that it makes them a big character. Somebody that... Um, that you shouldn't judge by its cover, judge him by its looks, or judge him by its size. He might look small, but he might be one of the most integral pieces in, um, in, in resolving the conflict between the Autobots and Decepticons. So that's what I would love to see for number 10. Okay, And that would, of course, be a motorcycle Autobot that has a very big role in the story. Number 9 is a scene... Where the Autobots, where an Autobot needs to transform into a vehicle to avoid detection by humans. It is after, after all, robots in disguise. And as you continue to watch the Transformers live-action films directed by Michael Bay, the robots in disguise elements seems to get seems to get lost throughout the sequels. In the first film, it was there, but in the second, third, and fourth one. It just was completely non-existent. So what I'd love to see is an Autobot vehicle in robot mode. Then suddenly somebody says to him, cops are coming or um, there's humans walking by, transform. And then he goes, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and then a humans walk by and they don't even realize that they just walk past an Autobot. I would love to see a scene like that. Such a scene, even though it's a very, very small scene, really is a piece of fan service. It really is a bit of an Easter egg um, or an element that fans love to see, especially in uh, a Transformers live action film, because this is something that is, um, is a theme in the original source material. So that's something that I would love to see. I hope one day they decide to put that back in to the live action films, all right? Number eight is a standoff between one or more Autobots and Decepticons and they charge at each other either in their um, vehicle modes or robot modes.
But either way, when they're charging at each other, let's say they're charging at each other in their vehicle modes, once they get close enough, they transform into the robot modes and just ram at each other. Like just clobber each other. We've seen this sort of thing before in like um, movies like uh, The Matrix when Agent Smith and uh, Neil ran at each other and then it was bullet time and then we were flying. And then also in uh, Remember the Planet of the Apes remake with Mark Wahlberg. Um, at, well, there was a scene where uh, two apes ran at each other and jumped in the air and just like... Boom! All right, and uh, so I would love to see that. I would love to see where these all these vehicles are charging at each other. Maybe it's Autobots and then the Stunticons, and then once they come together, they collide into the robot modes, and that would be cool. And then they just fight. Okay, that would be sick. Okay, number seven. A one-on-one -on -one battle between one Autobot and one Decepticon involving just pure brute force without cutting between other battles and humans. You know how when we're watching Transformers Dark of the Moon, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Age of Extinction, um, their final battles, it was always multiple battles going on, multiple stories, for example, a human story within the battle, and then the, and, and another, we cut to a, a scene where it's Bumblebee, and then we cut to a scene where it's Jetfire or, or a Dinobots or whatever. Basically, it cuts back and forth. Well, what, I've, what I would like to see is just a, a, a battle of just sheer physicality to... Um, two, two Transformers, one Autobot, one Decepticon, just pounding each other, and then it doesn't cut between other, other uh, scenes. I would love to see that, mainly because it's something that we haven't seen in, in, in its entirety. Like, for example, the battle between Optimus Prime and Sentinel Prime could have been great. It could have been even greater than it already is, all right? But they had to switch between all this other stuff that's going on. Like, for example, Sam Witwicky um, um, uh, fighting with Dylan or... or um, when when uh, when Optimus is fighting Lockdown, then we go to the Mark Wahlberg character and the and his daughter and and the boyfriend. You know what? All that stuff is just unnecessary. Just just let them fight. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I would like to see. And that is number seven. Number six is a battle at the Grand Canyon. It could even be a fictional location. It doesn't have to be the Grand Canyon. It could be at the Grand Canyon, Canyon but it's called something else. And not only is it a battle at the Grand Canyon, but it involves a bridge and just a lot of large monuments. A lot of large, uh, like, natural monuments, like in Monument Valley. So, I would love to see that. Battle at the Grand Canyon, and it involves a bridge. Maybe the bridge gets destroyed or something. I don't know. But I just want to bring back G1 style action where a lot of a lot of the battles actually took place in what looked like the Grand Canyon. So that's a bit of a nod to G1 and that's something that I would love to see in a live action sequel. All right. Number five is a human is captured inside the driver's side or cockpit of a Decepticon, and Decepticon drives it crazy, all right? So what happens is that maybe, for example, I don't know, Mark Wahlberg gets captured in, I don't know, uh, um, Thundercracker's cockpit, and then the Autobots have to go rescue him and, and with their aerial bots or something. And then he's he's just like, like oh my god, get me out of here, right? Get me out of this cockpit. And then Thundercracker is just going, <laughs> or, or better yet, Okay, um, uh, breakdown. It Stunticon um, g captures uh, um, uh, 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 Cade, puts him in his driver's side, and then he drives it crazy, like doing some really, really dangerous car stunts, making Cade feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Put on the seat belt, put on uh, like, uh, like hold on tight. You know, I would love to see a scene like that because once again, that's also straight out of G1. All right. Uh, there have been scenes. Uh, I don't remember exactly in which episode, but there have been scenes where humans have been captured inside the uh, the driver's side or cockpit of a Decepticon, and then the Autobots have to go rescue them. So that's what I would like to see, and that is number five. Number four, driving through a warehouse complex, and in this complex there are a lot of trucks. Okay, a lot of really big rig trucks. 
and then the they're driving up past all these trucks only to find out that one of them actually transforms and of course one of those trucks could be motormaster so imagine that i'm driving here and then like okay a lot of trucks here it's a it's a warehouse after all so there there's a lot of trucks then suddenly i look in my rear view mirror one of those trucks drive out and i'm thinking you know what why would there be trucks driving at this hour it's like the middle of the night okay then suddenly i look again in my rear view mirror and then the thing suddenly transforms into a robot and it starts charging after me and then i'm like step on it <laughs> That would be a sick scene, all right? I don't know why Michael Bay hasn't come up with ideas like this, but these are great moments that that uh, uh, that could um, that could make for some really exciting sequences. So I would love to see that, all right? Number three is a Decepticon car carrier with its cars on it. So let's just say the Decepticon car carrier is Motormaster and then on the car carrier is the Stunticons. And I almost thought that we were going to get Stunticons in Age of Extinction because there was this one scene where you had all these supercars on this car carrier. And all it really was was just used for this really quick two second scene where these cars were being transported inside KSI facility. But... They did nothing, all right? So what I would love to see is a car carrier Decepticon, and then the cars are actually on that car carrier. They're driving along, then suddenly the, they're transform and jump off the carrier. And then like, uh, and then Autobots are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, let's, let's turn the, uh, let's go the other direction, okay? Because uh, we don't stand a chance. <laughs> so that's what I would love to see, all right? Another really exciting sequence. Number two is a car chase. We've seen a lot of car chases, but uh, a lot of the car chases that we've seen are either in the city or on a freeway. And um, what I would like to see, and and this is this came from some inspiration from Mad Max Fury Road, is just a whole line of cars. You remember in Mad Max Fury Road, big desert chase sequence, there was all these cars and trucks just lined up, okay? And so I was just thinking what would be really, really cool is if all these cars and trucks, they were just all going through a desert highway. Not even a highway, but just a plain field. And then the camera is 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 uh, uh, is is um, taking the photography or, or the, the filming from above, from a helicopter, and you see all these cars just creating all this dust and trail of smoke behind it. And then um, some of them are running as robot modes, and the rest of them are driving. And I'm just thinking that would be an epic sequence. That would be the, uh, the, the, uh, the Decepticon, um, I guess that would be kind of like the arrival of the Decepticons. You know how there was the arrival of the Autobots in the first Transformers film? Well, this is the arrival of the Decepticons. And there's and what they're doing is they're just driving through this desert or this open plain field, creating a big smoke dust dust clouds and then um like i said some of them are charging in robot modes and while the others are driving that would make for a great sequence it's a great build up to something even bigger all right maybe they're they're driving to a city which they are going to invade all right finally the last thing i want to see is a battle or the final battle at a military base why a military base because well you have military vehicles there tanks helicopters, Humvees, um, uh, uh, mobile artillery, uh, mobile um, surface-to-air missile launchers, um, all kinds of things. And a lot of them could be Autobots and some of them could be even Decepticons. Or better yet, we have Autobots fighting a battle at a military base because an evil piece of the AllSpark fell into the military base, thus creating evil life uh, and, and evil Decepticons out of these military vehicles and essentially bringing to life the Combaticons. 
all right? I think that would be sick. And then a lot of the U.S. military soldiers would be trying to, to fight these guys off and wondering, like, what the hell? Why is my tank coming to life? And they're trying to blast it only to find out that their bullets don't do crap. So they're running to safety. And then and then afterwards, you find out that the next scene is not a, a battle involving the military, but it's the Autobots versus these evil Decepticon military vehicles and the reason why the military aren't involved anymore is because their weapons just don't work anymore so that is why the Autobots need to intervene so that would make for a great sequence and I would be really really super excited to see that happen I know it's totally Michael Bay style to involve uh, uh, military vehicles but still if done the right way from another director it would be a badass sequence so there you have it these are 10 specific moments that I would love to see in a Transformers live action film I hope that you can actually picture it in your head but I'll just go through it with you alright number 10 a motorcycle Autobot that has a big role number 9 a scene where an Autobot needs to transform into a vehicle to avoid human detection number 8 a standoff between one or more Autobots and Decepticons where they charge at each other in their vehicle modes and once they get close they transform into robots and then just slam into each other's bodies number 7 a one-on-one -on -one battle between one Autobot and one Decepticon where their fight is just a moment of sheer brute force. Just a physical fight without cutting between humans and other scenes, alright? It's just a one-on-one -on -one battle that is, uh, that is completely focused on them, alright? Number six, a battle at the Grand Canyon or a fictional version of the Grand Canyon which involves a bridge, okay? Number five, a human is captured inside a Decepticon jet or a Decepticon vehicle, like a car, and then the the Stenticon or the, the, the Seeker drives it crazy or flies it crazy, causing the human to be in full panic mode, all right? Uh, and then the Autobots need to rescue him. And uh, number four, is a warehouse sequence where um, some humans which are inside an Autobot, like for example, Optimus Prime or Bumblebee, they drive through a warehouse complex where there's lots of trucks only to find out later on that they're being chased by one of these, this, one of these evil Decepticon trucks that come alive and they notice it transform in their rear view mirror, okay? Number three is a Decepticon car carrier with the cars also being Decepticons, okay? And number two, a car chase that takes place on a plain desert highway where you see all these Decepticon cars and some of them are in their robot modes running because they decide that they don't want to drive, all right? But it's all these cars uh, uh, um, which are shown like kind of like Mad Max Fury Road style. So that would be really, really cool. And number one would be the final battle taking place at a military base. So essentially Autobots fighting Combaticons. And there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. This is my top 10 list. And why don't you share, me, share with me your top 10 list of scenes, specific sequences that you would love to see, which you think would make for a great Transformers live action film. All right, let me know in the comment section below. Before I sign off, I just want to share with you an Instagram account that would be the official Instagram account of ages3andup.com. Why don't you guys head over there and uh, give it a follow, show some support because they're being more active on their Instagram profile and they're posting more and more photos. And if they know that you guys are following them, then and you guys, uh, then they'll they'll post more content. So uh, show some support and um, let them know that Rage Nation sent you there. All right. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this video. What do you think of any of the the ideas that I've mentioned? And also, if you would like to let me know your ideas that you would like to see, and I'll take a look at them, and maybe we'll talk about them in the next video. All right. And that's all I got to say in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, ages. Uh, <laughs> like me on Facebook, the Rage Nation, and also follow me on Twitter at Rage Nation. My name is Alex Hugh. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. But that was a very, very exciting day when we got the official pictures from MichaelBay.com, his official website, and we saw Crosshairs and